Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Amar from Greenlight Planet, and I lead channel development for financial services at uh, Greenlight Planet. And I will be your moderator and one of the presenter for today's session. Thank you very much for joining our webinar today on how green lending can benefit you and your members. This webinar is a part of our solar leadership series, a proprietary event by Greenlight Planet, which aims to bring together experts from across industries to discuss, deliberate, and implement some of the best practices which can help promote energy inclusion. Uh, we have attendees joining and we will get started shortly. Uh, but before that, a few record keeping notes. This session is being recorded for the purpose of those who are unfortunately not able to join this webinar. And we will also be sharing this recording with all the attendants shortly after this webinar. For the duration of this session, all the participants are muted, but please feel free to use the question and answer option that you should be able to find on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, you can ask questions at any point in time and at the end of every presentation, we will try to take as many questions as possible. Also during this uh, webinar, we will be conducting live polls to gauge your interest as well. And also after each speaker session, we will have contest questions and those of you who will get it right and at the quickest will have a chance to win a $50 gift voucher as well. So please try to be as interactive as possible. And if you have any question, try to ask at any point in time during this webinar as well. Also, if for some reason you're having audio issues connecting via internet, you can also connect via phone whose details you can see on the screen now. Okay, uh, so let's get started. And without a further ado, I would like to introduce to the rest of the great speakers that we have today. Uh, that is, we have Mr. Pranab Rakshit, who's the CEO of Sarla, an MFI based out of India. We have Ms. Estrella Andres, who is Vice President of ASHI, an MFI based out of Philippines. We also have Ms. Anna Manahan, who is the Program Manager for MCPI. MCPI is a microfinance association of Philippines. And some of the things that we would be discussing today are, what is the potential of green lending in the markets that most of the webinar attendees are from today, that is in Philippines and Cambodia? How Greenlight Planet has worked with MFIs across the globe in getting green lending started and overcoming some of the implementation issues. We also have our friends from Sarla, and Ashi, who would talk from the MFI experience, how they build the operation models, how is it that they've successfully integrated green lending with the core MFI business, and also ensure that it is a sustainable business as well. Talk from the client perspective, how their clients are benefited in the process, because at the end of the day, the objective is to ensure that the clients actually benefit in, through energy and financial inclusion integration. It's really exciting to be able to connect with you all and share the work that we do at Greenlight Planet in advancing the mission of energy inclusion. And what are some of the best ways which we can, in which we can integrate both energy as well as financial inclusion? To give you a brief overview of the work that we do at Greenlight Planet, Greenlight Planet is a socially motivated organization and our mission is to power the lives of those underserved customers. And how do we do this? Well. We do this primarily by designing and distributing a line of affordable solar home energy solutions for households that are either completely off the grid or they lack access to reliable electricity or they're dependent on expensive forms of energy. And a little bit more about Greenlight Planet. So we have offices in nine countries and till they, uh, We've sold nearly 9 million sunking solutions across the 65 countries in Asia and Africa that we operate. And these are some of the savings that you can see on the screen, the kerosene offset that we've been able to do in the 10 years that we've been working. And also it has resulted in savings of more than 719 million USD. And that has resulted in 35 plus million happy customers. And also to give you an better and easy way of how our impact actually works. So every minute, five new households invest in a sunking solution. 
So by the time we're through with this webinar, we would have about 1400 people who will have stopped relying on dirty, dangerous and more expensive forms of energy and have instead started using and enjoying safer, reliable and healthier energy provided by Sun King. Well, how do we do this? Uh, we do this in three ways. One, we try to partner with a we have vast network partners. And that primarily includes telecom companies, NGOs, agri-input companies, and microfinance institutions. So we have more than 60 microfinance institutions in 10 plus countries that we work with. Uh, that is one way by partnering with distribution networks that we try to reach out to these households. Another way is uh, by, we have about more than thousands of rural retailers. And we also have our own network of more than 8,000 direct sales agents in six plus countries. So that's a brief overview in terms of the work that we do at Greenlit Planet, how we partner with various, what are the various distribution companies that we partner with, and a little bit about the products through which we actually do this. Uh, so you should be able to see the products that we offer. Uh, the products that we offer are ranging from $8 to about $500. So we have products as basic as just a study lamp. We have products that also work both as a light as well as you could charge your mobile phone. We have Sun King Wind. And then we also have a home series which comes with solar uh, e equipped television as well. And one great thing about these products are that these come in a really compact and easy to carry packaging. And the packaging includes solar panel, it includes lamp, battery, charging cables, and other installation materials. These products are really easy to use, and these are plug and play products, which means the customer can actually start using them and installing them on their own, and it doesn't need any technician to install them. Also, these products typically weigh between 0.23 grams to about 5,000 grams. What it actually means is that it is very easy to carry, and it almost takes little to no space when you actually store them. Also, all our products come with a two year repair or replacement warranty. And all the products that you are currently able to see on your screen, other than the Pico series, are also equipped with Easy Buy technology. What this Easy Buy technology does is it ensures that upon non payment of installments, the lights are automatically disabled as well. So, this gives a lot of uh, comfort to the MFIs, which though unsecured lending okay now having talked about the products that we offer let's have a look how large the problem is let's try and understand in terms of like how many people in this whole world actually live without electricity and to do that we have our first poll question coming so let's try and understand from you how large do you think the problem is? And for that, we have the first poll question coming. So, and you should be able to see the poll question on your screen now. And the question is, how many people around the world, as per you, lack access to electricity? And the options are more than 1 billion, 500 million to 1 billion, 250 million to 500 million, or less than 250 million. So we will keep this poll open for about 50 seconds and please do select one of the options and after 15 seconds we will close the poll and we will be able to share the live results with you so you have about 10 more seconds to select the option that you think is true to the best of your knowledge okay we have options coming in People are selecting various options. Okay, we have five more seconds. So if you've not already submitted your response, please do so. Okay, we're closing the poll in about two seconds. Okay, we've closed the poll and let's share the results with you. Okay, so about 82% of those who are attending the webinar actually think that it's more than 1 billion and about 20 percent of you think it's between 500 million to 1 billion so let's see what is it actually so it's actually 1.2 billion people across the world that do not have access to basic electricity and they live completely off the grid 
and and how large is this problem in philippines and cambodia well both these in both these countries put together there are about 11 million people who do not have access to reliable electricity now having understood the fact that these households do not have access to electricity then what is their source of lighting well various reports have suggested that primarily these households do not have access to reliable electricity and are not connected to the grid they're mostly dependent on kerosene lead acid batteries fuel intense generators and in some instances even candles while these do serve as alternates but there are problems with these options and the problems with these options is that most of these alternate sources of energy are very toxic in nature leading to long term health issues there are fire accidents and also these products are very inferior in quality which results in frequent breakdown and there is often no after sales support while customers think that they're actually paying a smaller price to purchase these products but having to spend on the same products with a smaller life cycle over and over they actually end up spending way more in fact the health benefits uh, sorry the health uh, problems that most of these uh, alternate uh, options actually give are very uh have another poll question so that we understand from you what you think about this problem so we have a second poll question coming on your screen this is based on the world health organization study so you should be able to see the question on your screen and the question is how many deaths are caused per year by fuel based lighting and heating globally and the options are 8 million 4 million option 3 1 million and option 4 about 500000 okay we have about uh, 15 seconds for you to select one of these options please do select one of the options and we will be sharing the live results with you as well okay you have you have about uh, you have about 5 uh, seconds after which we would be closing the poll okay we're closing the poll now okay let's share the results with you okay <laughs> as you can see this uh, the response unlike the previous poll question is very skewed while majority which is 53% actually think it's 4 million rest of them think it's 8 million some of them think it's 1 million 500000 but as per world health organization study this is actually 4 million so yes it is actually every year there are 4 million people who are affected and have health problems because of these fuel based lighting so now we understand how grave this problem is uh and also another thing is uh, it's just not these uh, households who are completely off the grid and are dependent on this toxic uh, alternate options uh, that would actually be needing green lending but it is also those households that are actually dependent on expensive forms of energy like the electricity bill uh, which comes every month is really huge for most of these households as well like this is uh, uh, this experience which i am sharing is from one of the field visits that i've had in philippines Uh, so when i visited this chicken poultry farmer in philippines so i was trying to understand from them how much does he actually spend on electricity bill every month for a typical poultry which looks small enough like this so this farmer tells me that he spends about 300 pesos every month now again compare this with a sunking product whose typical life cycle is anywhere more than 5 years and cost in philippines about 4500 pesos which means if the customer were to actually buy sunking product he would just pay for one and a half years and he would enjoy free lighting for the rest of the three and a half years now so we can factor the market for this uh, green lending is not just limited to off grid but it is also those households that pay expense that are dependent on expensive forms of energy and actually end up paying a lot of electricity bills as well now let's try and understand in which ways can mfi be part of this synergy and also ensuring what are the best ways in which we can have least disruptions in the way they're currently working but before that let's quickly pause for a second 
and understand what this green lending is all about. Well, uh, green microfinance or green lending is application of lending to promote not only financial inclusion and social empowerment, which all the MFIs do, but it is also working for environment sustainability. As most of you would know, environmental protection is a critical issue for people across the globe, especially for those living in poverty, because they are the ones who are often hardest hit by climate change, sea level rising, severe weather conditions, and also lack of access to quality lighting or solutions. What green microfinance or green lending attempts to do is, it attempts to incorporate a third bottom line while maintaining positive financial as well as social performance looks easy then why is it that not many mfis are actually doing this well there are a lot of mfis who are doing it and they've been successfully integrated green lending with the with their core mfi business and I, and i believe uh, sarala and ashi who would speak a little later would talk more about this as well but there are also a lot of mfis who've not been able to do it and their and their customers are the one who's deprived of this and the reasons what we've understood is uh, some of them. One is uh, intensive operation models, which affects the current way of their working. Another reason why most of the MFIs are hesitant to start green lending is because they're not able to fully integrate green lending and often treat it as a part of a CSR model, which can work in a short term, but their customers do not benefit in the long term. And then there are often complaints about workload on the field staff because field staff would not have enough time to do an other new thing. And then there are complaints about inferior quality products being available and MFI is not being able to choose which is a good quality product and how is it that they can start uh, financing for those products as well. And then there are often complaints about inefficient after sales service, which, which is one of the reasons why a lot of MFIs actually start green lending, but are unfortunately able, not able to continue uh, continuing the uh, green financing for these kind of products well uh, having worked with over 60 mfis in 10 different countries and after deliberating with industry experts we've designed three models which ensure least disruption in mfi's current way of working but before we do that we understand the challenges that exist in starting green lending we know the demand that exists with at least in Philippines and Cambodia, it's 11 million. But before we look at the model, let's try and understand from you, how big do you think this market is? And for that, we have one poll question coming up and you should be able to see the question on your screen now. So what is the estimated size of green energy financing market by 2035? And the options that you have are 100 to 300 billion USD. Is it 500 to 700 billion USD? Is it one to two trillion USD or four to six trillion USD? And the question is, what is the estimated size of green energy financing market by year 2035? Okay, you have about 10 seconds to select one of the options. And then after which we would close the poll and we would be sharing the results with all of you. Okay, we have results coming in, but looks like the results are very varied. Okay, we have about five seconds after which we would be closing the poll. Okay, we're closing the poll and the results are... Okay, so majority have actually chosen 500 to 700 billion USD as well as one to two trillion USD. But unfortunately, nobody, not many of them would get it right. It's actually four to six trillion USD. Yes. So the green energy financing market by 2035 is estimated to be four to six trillion USD. And this is a good enough reason, both from a financial reasons, as well as like the social reasons and environmental sustainability, green energy financing does and should make sense to you. Okay. Uh, before that, like I was mentioning before, having worked with various MFIs, understanding the challenges that they have and understanding the challenges that they have, uh, what we've done is like we've, devel we've developed a 
three models, which is facilitation model, distribution model, and energy officer model. We'll get into each of these models and how it is different from each other and who is it best suited for. But before that, we will play a small video on facilitation model, which should help you understand how majority of the MFIs or actually working on this green energy are actually doing it. So let's quickly play this video. Um, you should about in a second. Just give us a second. If you have a blank screen coming up, that could be because of the lag. Okay, you should be able to see the video now. Welcome to a short video where we take you through the steps to our MFI facilitation model. We start with Green Dye Planet staff training all the MFI field staff on product features, usage and the financing option available. At the centre meeting, the loan officer demonstrates Sunking products and explains their benefits to MFI members. This is aided with pitch materials such as flyers, banners and videos provided by Green Dye Planet. Interested clients fill up a loan application form, which is then submitted for a credit check at the MFI branch office. The MFI shares the list of approved orders with Greenlight Planet and makes the payment to the regional distributor's account. Upon receiving the customer details, Greenlight Planet's distributor dispatches the solar products with customer invoices to the respective MFI branches. The dispatch details are also shared with the MFI. Customers can then pick up the Sunking solar products from the respective MFI branches or at their next centre meeting. Greenlight Planet ensures that delivery details are also shared with the MFI. At the end of every month, the MFI provides Greenlight Planet with a service invoice based on the monthly lights purchased by clients. Once the invoice is received, Greenlight Planet pays the MFI facilitation fee. And that's the end of the steps in our facilitation model for MFIs. Okay, so that was an overview in terms of like the, what the facilitation model looks like and how it works starting from how the MFI loan officers are trained and then how the customers actually pitched about the product and how the delivery happens and how Greenlight Planet actually works with the MFI in this entire process. Now let's look at the other two models which exist and how is it different from this facilitation model. To start with, in, in terms of like MFI staff involvement, in facilitation model, it's pretty equal. Both loan officers or the field staff, as well as the green light planet staff are equally involved in this model. Whereas in distribution model, in which the MFI would procure products directly from green light planet, it is MFI staff who are majorly responsible in driving day-to-day -day operations. Whereas in energy officer model, Greenlight Planet would employ the dedicated personnel for one single branch or a group of branches who would be responsible for aggregating the demand and actually ensuring that the customer interest is there. So the level of staff involvement, as you will see, is moderate in facilitation model, it's higher in distribution model, and it's very low in energy officer model. Demand aggregation. Uh, in both facilitation model as well as distribution model is typically done by MFI through their loan officers or other field staff. Whereas in energy officer model, MFI is not responsible for demand aggregation and it is actually Greenlight Planet or Greenlight Planet through its distributor would be responsible for this particular model. In terms of the marketing support that Greenlight Planet would provide in each of these models, does exist but the level of uh, support that we provide is slightly different in facilitation model it's significantly higher and so is it in energy officer model whereas in distribution model it's slightly lower we would still be responsible for designing but much of the implementation is decided by the mfi itself 
And in terms of the commercial benefits, the commercial benefits are much higher for the MFI in distribution model, primarily because MFI is responsible in this particular model for most of those, most of the operational things. Whereas in facilitation model, it's moderate because both Greenlight Planet staff as well as MFI staff would be responsible. In energy officer model, the commercial benefits for MFI are substantially lower. That's mostly because MFI level of involvement is only limited to financing and rest of the things are taken care by Greenlight Planet. In terms of involving a local distributor, local distributor is involved in both facilitation model as well as energy officer model. Whereas in distribution model, local distributor is not involved. And the role of local distributor in these models is limited to invoicing to customers and sometimes ensuring the product delivery to the branches as well. In terms of like the incentives, incentives uh, by Greenlight Planet to the field staff for their efforts and time does exist in both facilitation model as well as in distribution model. Whereas in energy officer model, it doesn't exist primarily because it's the Greenland planet staff who is actually doing bulk of the work. In terms of like the product delivery or the turnaround time for product delivery across the branches. So it's, it's moderate in both facilitation model as well as in energy officer model. Whereas in distribution model, because MFI would procure the goods directly from Greenlight planet, the turnaround time would be slightly better than the rest of the other two models. And the most important thing which all of you should uh, duly note as you're deciding one of these models is how easy is it to scale up this particular model. Uh, based on our experience, what we've seen is facilitation model is something that is moderate and it's easier to scale up. That's mostly because both Greenlight Planet as well as MFI would work very closely in ensuring what are the various branches that you're actually uh, scaling up, what are the different products, what are the various financing options exist and how best we can do in marketing. So this, op, uh, this particular model is relatively easier to scale up. And in distribution model, of course, it's easier in a sense that MFI is mostly responsible for day-to-day -day operations, how well you want to do the execution. So in terms of the success and the scale up, it really depends on how best MFI can do it. Whereas an energy officer model, this is slightly difficult to scale up, mostly because of the infrastructural challenges. The challenges include you have to have your own staff who would be working in various branches. You will have to employ staff. You will have to ensure that you're reaching out to the customers and customers more often than not would not know these energy officers because they're third party for them. So if a loan officer is actually trying to pitch a product to the customer customer would already know that particular loan officer and there is a greater amount of trust from of loan officer as well so what we've understood is that in terms of like scaling up purely from an infrastructural challenges it's actually energy officer model which is slightly difficult to scale up again it's not to say one model is better than other model it really depends in terms of like what does the off grid or the demand for these kind of product exists within your community base to what level do you think your MFI can be involved in the process? And how much does it really matter for you in terms of like adding to the third bottom line as well? So these are the various parameters in which you can decide which model works best for you. So yeah, so this is a brief overview in terms of like the work that we've been doing at Greenlight Planet, uh, the various operation models that we've developed and the products that we uh, offer to ensure that the customers who are living on unreliable uh, alternate energy lighting options can actually switch to these options. And uh, now to talk further about this, we also have uh, we also have Mr. Pranabda from uh, Sarla. So, Ms. Yeah, one second. Yeah, so Pranab Rakshit, uh, from, who is the managing director of Sarla Development and Microfinance Limited. So Sarla is an MFI with approximately 133,000 clients and having their operations primarily in the eastern part of India. And Sarla is considered as a pioneer in energy lending in India. Now I request Pranabda to share some of the struggle that they have faced in building the energy lending and how they've successfully integrated with their MFI business as well. Uh, so over to you, Pranabda.
just one second as we get this started. Good afternoon, friends. This is Pranav Rakshit. Uh, I lead an organization called Solar Development and Microfinance Private Limited based out of uh, the eastern part of India, um, Kolkata and other surrounding states. And uh, this is really uh, for me uh, a pleasure to share my experiences through this uh, webinar platform conducted by Greenlight Planet. So today I would cover uh, the um, success story of microfinance uh, in, in energy lending program of Sarola, uh, where we have impacted uh, many people uh, through lending and um, of the microfinance clients specifically. We, we started our microfinance activities in the year 2006 through a uh, not-for-profit entity called Sorla Women Welfare Society, specifically in the eastern part of India. Uh, the, we started, say, in 2006 uh, through a not-for-profit entity when in a period of, say, uh, eight, nine years, uh, while our client base was uh, more than 50,000 and banks were getting comfort of lending to the institutions who are more regulated by uh, central bank and being not for profit we were not regulated by central bank and we then decided to shift our microfinance portfolio from the not-for-profit entity to a for-profit entity called Sorla Development and Microfinance Private Limited. And accordingly, uh, all of these uh, liabilities and assets got transferred in the year 2012. And now we are um, doing our microfinance, carrying out our microfinance activities specifically through this uh, for-profit regulated entity. So where we are present in uh, four states, all are in Eastern India and through these 68 branches, we reached out to more than 150,000 families, all are women. So uh, during last uh, four uh, um, years of operation in microfinance to a for-profit mode, uh, we are uh, doing uh, good, but at the same time, we uh, thought of uh, while all of these microfinance activities got shifted to a for profit entity, we thought of doing something uh, specifically for energy lending through that not for profit entity. While few of the microfinance institutions in India started uh, tying up with some product companies uh, offering loans uh, and the small uh, products, uh, energy products uh, to their microfinance clients. And we also probably the pioneer in the eastern part of the country uh, providing my, uh, energy loans to the microfinance clients. As told in the last slide, uh, that Sorla lending, Sorla energy lending program uh, got started from that Sorla society uh, where we partnered with the product companies and providing finance to the clients of Sarla or uh, microfinance clients and these products basically uh, are interest free and without uh, having any charges because Sarla uh, understood that whatever uh, cut Sarla will get from the product companies that would cover its finance cost, its operational cost 
and there must be being a not for profit uh, company it doesn't have a motive of profit maximization that's why it decided to uh, provide the interest free product to the microfinance clients so um, having tied up with the product companies like greenlight planet we uh, decided to make an awareness program initially with the microfinance clients that uh, why it is needed and basically we would certainly facilitate the sales of the product companies and as well as uh, will deliver the products uh, with the loans wherever needed and uh, uh, subsequently uh, the collection of the uh, loans or installments would be made uh, through this microfinance uh, channel. So uh, it is uh, mm, basically tying up with Greenlight uh, Planet. Um, although India is uh, producing uh, sufficient amount of electricity uh, and but as uh, it is not distributed through the uh, grid supply so there is a need so uh, in the operational part of Sarola we have also made an uh, assessment or survey that there are specifically three areas in the operational part of Sarola where there is exclusively no grid had reached yet. So grid supply is no, not there, electricity is not there. So and second uh, 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 area of our operation is where there is no power cut at all. So in the urban areas like Kolkata and many other towns, uh, there is uh, almost no power cut. So, uh, uh, and there is also the areas where uh, power cuts are there. Uh, sometimes it is uh, almost more than 15-20 uh, hours uh, availability is not there. And sometimes it is even 4-5 hours in a day uh, while uh, powers are not available. So uh, we felt this need and introduced these products, loan products. So uh, having seen all of this, so we uh, tied up with Greenlight Planet. And uh, another thing, what before starting, because we uh, are the service provider. We were providing our loans to our microfinance clients, but basically with an agreement with these product companies, we need to uh, um, supply the products in hand. So there should be uh, a inventory control mechanism in the system, so which were not available in our microfinance system. So we had a uh, separate uh, MIS uh, specifically we had developed a software rather uh, wherein we can also make a control or, uh, of the inventory uh, which had been uh, shared by the in product companies to the microfinance branches. So this way uh, we, we were addressing basically three things. One, how the inventory control mechanism can be made, how the uh, loan uh, products uh, which were already available in our uh, system or uh, software and third thing, how the cash management system should be made. So keeping all of these things in mind, we developed a software and uh, naturally uh, the uh, startup uh, was a little smoother uh, in our case. Basically, we have microfinance loan products as well as energy loan products. So, wherein we used to give a tenure of say 10 months to 24 months in case of microfinance, but energy lending, as you see, that it is uh, starting from six months even for a year. So, and uh, microfinance loans uh, are 
from 15,000 rupees to 50,000 rupees, uh, basically. Uh, and um, for energy lending, it is Indian rupees 600 to 18,000. Uh, because we have uh, installed some home systems uh, which uh, cost uh, about 18,000 rupees and frequency in regard to frequency according to the need according to the cash flow of the clients so we decided uh, how it would be sometimes it is fortnightly sometimes it is monthly or sometimes it is weekly as the case may be so this way we just designed our product uh, to be honest, while we started this uh, or looking for the partners, uh, product partners, uh, we had burnt our hands initially, uh, having ordered more than 1000 units with our product. But later we found that more than 60%, almost two thirds of the products were getting returned. Uh, then we immediately uh, changed the product and the product companies and then it was um, green light came in and we tied up with them. This partnership with green light uh, as I told that we facilitated the sale and they had uh, helped us making the awareness created among our borrowers. So uh, our frontline staff called loan officers um, had been given training initially how to because they are expert in uh, loan products but as far as the uh, uh, products of energy are concerned so they were supposed to have this training and it has been properly conducted it has been properly uh, conducted by Green Light Planet as well as the uh, product materials uh, which had been shared through these uh, loan officers to the microfinance clients uh, wherever necessary. And uh, sometimes motivating the loan officers, some in incentives uh, have been uh, provided by them. Uh, and we we also uh, launched some uh, incentive program for the people who could be good uh, in selling these products and we have a separate uh, audit department who conducts periodically the audit uh, whether uh, the approaches were good whether it was a uh, push uh, by the loan officers to the uh, microfinance clients. So these are well balanced and basically uh, wherever there are although few uh, defects found, so defective units, defects means defective units found. The, so all of these defective units were properly addressed in a very shortened period in a very short period it was merely when we started with this solar lantern so there was a need of home systems although they had that time probably some home system or home products which were not that much efficient to be honest so they came out with the efficient products and uh, sometimes in the summer um, all of our uh, Loanee members or of our borrowers expected uh, the solar fans, uh, although it is little costly, uh, but they had also in time came out with this uh, fans and um, they are actually uh, working together with the loan officers as well as our mid-level management team providing uh, many informations, exchanges uh, and uh, proper planning is there and uh, for scaling it up and not only in a very fast manner but uh, slowly but steadily uh, but they are very uh, participated I, I should say in all levels of while they work.
uh, as I told that yeah, it should be uh, a continuous effort because in India uh, our Prime Minister have already committed that uh, all of the villages in India should be electrified within 2019. So, uh, and it has also been uh, seen that there might not be possible to reach out through this grid supply. So, solar energy is a very priority uh, as far as this uh, uh, Indian context is concerned. So, we have seen that the uh, product companies which uh, should be uh, uh, specifically providing the post-sale services in a right manner, uh, who, the companies who can come out with the need-based product of the companies, uh, who, who can address the delivery mechanism properly. So, that company need to be prioritized to continue the relationship with uh, as far as microfinance institutions and the solar uh, products or solar uh, product companies are concerned. So, uh, we would be happy to continue our relationship with uh, Greenlight Planet going forward as they are also meeting our um, expectations in a uh, right time uh, and uh, they are also committed for doing this uh, national uh, objective of providing this uh, supply or uh, these products in a very uh, to the rural as well as semi-urban areas where there is no reliable, uh, reliable uh, supply of the electricity. So my sincere thanks to all of the participants, uh, those who have already uh, learned my experiences of uh, solar uh, energy program of Sarla and I hope that they could be able to work together with uh, Greenlight Planet to the capacity they have and um, a global mission of uh, energy program or uh, emission of carbon uh, we should be uh, working together okay my best wishes to all of you and um, I, I, I can share a um, few of my thoughts later if I get the opportunity thank you very much Thank you very much, Pranabda, for sharing your journey, which I'm sure will be inspirational for many of those who are attending this webinar. So before we start the context question, Dada, I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, yeah. If you can answer some of them, it will be great. The first question is, how do you pick a right product company? Because a lot of companies promises many things. So how do you ensure that they actually fulfill their obligations and because if you pick a wrong company the our credibility within our com community can be compromised okay uh, this is a good question actually as i uh, had already uh, told in my presentation that uh, uh, while we started earlier we choose a wrong company uh, we, we had burnt our hands initially Basically, three things need to be kept in mind. One, whether they are having a good experience with the MFIs or not. Second, uh, that they should be having a good product, diversified product, as well as uh, it has to be the uh, post sale services must have to be kept in mind because basically MFI is tying up with MFI is 
uh, many products can be sold out uh, initially but later uh, our core activities of lending microfinance or income generation uh, activities should not be hampering only by tying up with a product company and a third thing that uh, the product companies having a scaling up the your uh, energy lending program the product companies should also be supportive uh, that they should be uh, uh, providing these products in time uh, and uh, the logistic arrangements must have to be made little faster according to the expectation of the user as well as the microfinance institution so basically these three things if you can keep in mind then probably uh, uh these energy lending programs specifically for the microfinance institutions would be uh, fair it would be good amar okay thank you dada dada one more question we will take it so the question i think you uh, mentioned this a little bit in your presentation uh, what is the work extra workload for your loan officers in this process are they like overburdened like how do you ensure that uh, your loan officers are motivated enough to also promote these uh, solar products or green energy products uh, so uh, basically what happens uh, so anything additional anything extra uh, initially uh, makes an, uh, in, uh, i should not say irritation but some amount of burden if it is not physical certainly mental Uh, but you have to address this properly having a uh, um, uh, proper or um, uh, having introduction of we managed initially having it uh, an introduction of um, additional revenue for the uh, staff all across from the field level staff uh, to the mid level management staff uh, so for us i can tell you that they didn't ever tell me uh, that it is an additional burden uh, because of they were getting incentivized uh, for doing this additional activities but they, uh, i i can personally believe uh, that they hard they worked hard uh, initially approaching to the clients uh while in in the evening rather uh, we we had conducted group meetings in the evening with the uh, sun king lights on uh, uh how it is performing and all uh, so uh, they didn't take it um, burden some uh, but they were motivated not only because of this uh, additional incentive we are providing but during the internal uh, training session we uh, had also told that this is something which should be uh, th there should be a social mission uh, which needs to be addressed as we are a social work okay perfect thank you dada i think in lieu of time we would move to the rest of the presentation but we can take more questions at the end of this uh, presentation as well thank you dada No issue. I'm here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we have a next poll question coming. Uh, this is based on what uh, Mr. Pranav has just presented. So again, this is uh, a contest question. So those of you who will get this right at the quickest time will have a chance to win a fifty dollar gift voucher. So the question you should be able to see on your screen now. and the question is how much revenue has sarla generated in solar financing so far is it more than 1 million usd 500000 to 750000 usd is it 250000 to 500000 usd or is it less than 250000 usd so you can select one of the options uh, based on the presentation which pranav da just made uh you have about 10 seconds to select one of those options and the ones who will get it correct will have a chance to win a 50 dollar gift voucher as well so we have 5 more seconds okay we'll be closing this poll in about 3 seconds 
and we will share those results with you okay we're closing the poll now okay so most of you have selected the option 500,000 to 750,000 but it's actually more than 1 million USD so Sarla till date has uh, done a business of more than 1 million USD in solar financing so for those of you who've selected uh, more than 1 million USD uh, you got it right and we will contact you separately after this webinar uh, for the gift voucher okay so moving on with the presentation so we now have uh, Ms. Astrila Andres uh, from MCPI. Uh, Ashi is an MFI based out of Philippines with operations primarily in uh, in Luzon and uh, Western Visayas region uh, with over 60,000 clients. Uh, now may I request Ms. Astrila to talk about their energy lending program and how their clients have uh, witnessed some of the benefits. So just two seconds and you would be able to see Ashi's presentation. Great morning, everyone. This is Australia Dress, Ashi Vice President. Thank you for inviting uh, Ashi and sharing our experiences on green lending in this webinar. Who is Ashi? Well, Ashi is Ahon Sahirap Incorporated and we live by this vision, this mission, and our strategic goals. In a nutshell, Ashi exists to help alleviate poverty by targeting the bottom poor in the Philippines. And we are guided by five important mission statements of inspiring our women and creating an environment that will help them in their empowerment. We also deliver quality service and we integrate value in this delivery. We share also with other agencies that are helping poverty reduction or alleviation. So that's why we're here. We're sharing our experiences with you. Our milestones started as an action research in 1989 in UP Los Baños. And we were registered with the Philippine Securities and Exchange Commission July 24, 1991. So we are already 27 years old. Uh, we had uh, underwent rehabilitation in the early years, 93 to 94. And we expanded to two major uh, regions in the Philippines, Calabarzon and Western Visayas in, in 1995. We had amended our bylaws and our articles of incorporation to be able to function as a microfinance NGO. And our new name now is Ahon Sahira Inc., a microfinance NGO. We have expanded operations in 2015 to 2017. And we offer these products and services. We have uh, loans, savings, and microinsurance for our products. And our microinsurance is under partnership with Pioneer. Basically, the loans are given to our members to provide them with capital for small income generating activities and uh, uh, to help them in, in the savings. No? We open compulsory savings and personal savings as well. In addition, we have non-financial services. These are mostly members' training, like livelihood, financial literacy, leadership, conflict management. ANB and NBC are active nonviolence and nonviolent communication. So we help them to be responsible citizens in their own barangays. We do parenting and natural family planning too. And we, uh, we always do annually medical mission, like we just... Uh, 
uh, provided med medical laboratory test for all our members. We have also some eye and cleft operation. So these are just sample uh, pictures of our non-financial service activities. Okay, uh, ASHI is in, as, as I have uh, mentioned earlier, we are in two regions, the Calabarzon region and Western Visayas. Uh, we are now uh, nine, covering nine provinces, 88 municipalities and cities, 1,000 barangays, and we are in 13 areas, 53 branches. At uh, the end of June this year, we are 66,963 members. This is our outreach. And 86% of that are active borrowers. Our total membership for the last four years, 2014 to 2017, went up uh, materially. Based on this uh, chart, the 2014 membership is only at 29,000. But after four years, it's now 61,000. And right now in June, 66,000. Uh, you can see the material increase in the membership. We also use PPI as a guiding uh, uh, tool in selecting our members. So in, in uh, uh, applicants, we use the PPI to, to check whether they are uh, our real target because we want to really target the bottom four. And we track their score as they uh, mature in ASHI. And from this graph, you can see that as they mature, their PPI score increases, which is a sign of uh, uh, positive realization of our mission. No outstanding in millions. <clears throat> this is uh, our history for the past four years. It's also increasing, although not as much from 2016 to 17 compared to 2015 to 16. Our total portfolio is 18.6 million US dollars and our average loan size is 303 US dollars or in equivalent peso is 16,071 pesos. Our par is 1.8%. Internal staff benefits. This, this is the first topic that uh, I guess you will all be interested how our green lending practices affects our staff. Uh, first, under the green lending program, we have the 3K loan. This is our loan portfolio to cater to uh, three areas, Kalusugan, which is health, Kalinisan, which is cleanliness, and Kapaligiran, which is environment. We give this to our members with zero interest flexible terms. And the term starts from three months up to two years. Our members uh, are given this uh, portfolio so they can uh, help uh, in environment protection as well as their health and uh, sanitation. The use of green energy products, we are implementing this in all our branches and our headquarters here. Uh, from this, we can generate uh, savings on cost. And this uh, cost savings will allow us to allocate funds for staff benefits. So we are able now to give additional benefits to our internal staff. And also with our staff uh, uh, capacity to effectively support this green lending, we allow them to get uh, their own uh, products. No? for personal and home use. Like for example, we also support them, giving them uh, loans at zero interest, uh, only the actual cost being paid by ASHI to the provider to get e their unit of uh, Home 60 or uh, the, the, the green products and also this water purifier as well as if uh, they want, there is another product, the gas light which uses uh, uh, LPG, which is very affordable. And through this also, we develop among our staff deep consciousness in proper uh, care of the environment. 
once our staff get involved in using the the green products they become more conscious like uh, when they use the solar la lamps the solar light they, they become more conscious of saving the environment and uh, uh, reducing uh, carbon emission on the part of our members they benefit a lot from green energy product like what you can see in the picture uh, they have this lamp uh, the, the electric fan and uh, this is the water dispenser so for the members they get health benefits like reduced air pollution instead of using the kerosene lamps they use the uh, solar lamps and when there is no pollution they have healthier lungs brighter lights also provide longer study hours for the children for the kids uh, the kids can already extend their studies and uh, uh, benefit from having solar lamps for safe drinking water this is another benefit of the member and for our wash uh, products wash means water sanitation and health uh, which we also give um, uh, toilets for our members we have zero open defecation so the environment is um, free from pollution also secondly uh, because of the the lamps no they can have longer working hours open their business even after six when the sun is already down and uh, this also happens the lamps are very useful every time we have brownouts after the storm they have brownouts extended brownouts can uh, cause uh, damage to their business so if they have the lights they can uh, use it for for opening their businesses and working uh, even after there is no more sunlight in most of our areas uh, calamities will often cause uh, continuous and long brownouts so this is very good it's also helpful the lamps are also helpful because they can band uh, at night with children so uh, they will be it's a very good help for natural family planning when you bond with children you're already tired and then the next thing you do you just sleep <laughs> then cost savings for our members reduce electric bills minimize sickness related cost and protection because when you use uh, kerosene lamps or candles chances are uh, it might catch fire especially if you have uh, curtains that can easily catch fire contribute to the reduction of carbon emission they become more familiar with carbon emission and climate change so consciousness also in terms of uh, the health to the environment and because they they are very conscious of the environment they become leaders in the community most of our members are already occupying barangay positions like barangay captain barangay kagawad so this this green energy products develop their uh, leadership in the community ashi is also a recipient of a number of awards we were awarded uh, by true lift the emerging practitioner milestone uh, in uh, last year and we were also given certificate of recognition by our mother network mcpi our former funder pcfc gave us also recognition trophy as well as oito credit by our partners uh, unilever they awarded us the founders award and the uh, lives protected uh, club uh, award so we are awarded uh, by our partners and this is uh, award also given by the people's management association of the philippines we often have visitors and this is one from nepal they're also given recognition every time they visit the philippines they drop by ashi okay our partners we have partners uh, everywhere and they're happy to have these uh, partners help us in our uh, needs no? this this oxford microfinance are 
very young professionals, and they helped us develop uh, our uh, approach to uh, environmental uh, concerns also. So green, green uh, microfinance is the focus. And then we're helped by Ramin. We are also helped by Wells Fargo. They are free uh, professional services that they give us, bankers without borders. And these are all helpful to us. Our partners in the in the green products, hybrid, Unilever, and water.org. So these are all folks. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Ms. Estrella, for those uh, insights. Uh, unfortunately, because of the time, we won't take any Q&A, but we have a quick poll coming up. This is another contest question. Uh, okay, you should be able to see the question on your screen now. Uh, based on the presentation which Ms. Estrella just gave about Ashi, which of the below benefits did Ashi's clients have through green energy products? The options are reduced electricity bills, reduced medical expenses, longer working hours for businesses, or all of the above. Uh, you have about 10 seconds uh, to select one of these options, and the ones who will get this right will have an option to, or will get a, have a chance to win $50 gift card. So we will shortly close the poll. So please do select one of the options that you have. Okay, we're closing the poll in five seconds. If you've not selected your uh, option, please do so. Okay, we're closing the poll now. And you should be able to see the results now. Well, some of them, some of you have selected reduced electricity bill and longer working hours. It's actually all of them. So what Ashi has presented is their clients have seen significant reduction in the electricity bills. Uh, and they've also seen some reduction in medical expenses by using green energy products and businesses are able to work for longer duration as well. So yes, so it's all of them. Uh, okay, quickly moving on. So we now have Ms. Anna Manahan uh, from Microfinance uh, Council of the Philippines or MCPI as it's called. Is MCPI is a national network of microfinance institutions that are working towards sustainable, innovative and client responsible solutions to, to reduce the poverty in Philippines. So Ms. Anna will talk about the enabling work which MCPI has been doing in green lending, be it in terms of like technical training, capacity building, helping design the right operational framework and other related things. So over to you, Ms. Anna. So we will shortly have Ms. Anna talking about MCPI's enabling framework. Okay, you should be able to see Ashi, uh, sorry, MCPI presentation shortly. Just one second. Good afternoon, I'm Anna Manahan. I'm the program manager for capacity building program of the Microfinance Council of the Philippines Incorporated. So today I will present to you the Green Inclusive Finance Initiative of MCPI and what are the activities under that initiative. So first, who is MCPI? MCPI is a national network of microfinance institutions and support organizations that advocate for sustainable, innovative, and client-responsive solutions to poverty in the Philippines. We are composed of 60 members. 49 are regular and 11 are associate members. MCPI has five core program areas. We have capacity building, advocacy, social performance management, and client protection, knowledge and resource management, and network strengthening. So under the capacity building program, we have three services. We do assessments, we conduct trainings and workshops, and we provide technical assistance to our members. So why green inclusive finance? As we all know, the Philippines is ranked third among the four countries that are most vulnerable to climate change. While this is seen as a threat, it may also be seen as an opportunity. And in the Philippines, the electrification rate is only at 83%. 17% are still unelectrified. Hence, the Green Inclusive Finance is an offshoot of the DEPSI project. 
It was adopted in 2016 as a strategy to achieve the third bottom line of MFIs, which is the environmental sustainability. Currently, the project is in partnership with ADA and MBDI, and it has three components. First is the green microfinance development, second is the partnership building, and third is the information and knowledge management. So since GIF is an option of the DevC project, I will just give you a brief overview of the DevC. So developing sustainable energy access project was implemented in 2014 to 2016 with four MFIs. These MFIs were Alalay sa Kaunlaran Incorporated, People's Bank of Caraga, Paglaong Multipurpose Cooperative, and Negros Women for Tomorrow Foundation. ASCII, PBC, and PNPC focused their green energy financing on smaller technologies, while NWTF opted for a bigger scale technology. So as you can see in the slide, there are 1,972 loan disbursements since the beginning of the project in 2014, which is equivalent to 140,126 euros or 7.7 .7 million peso. And since there are successes and lessons learned from the DevC project, MCPI and ADA decided to continue the project, adopting the Green Inclusive Finance Framework to support more MFIs for them to be able to develop their own green energy financing. So let's go back to the current project of MCPI. For the first component, the green microfinance development has two phases. The first phase is the green microfinance training, and the second phase is the technical assistance with co-financing grant. So for the green microfinance training, it is a three-day classroom session and a two-day exposure visit. It utilizes the four modules developed by MCPI, which built on the experience of DevC project. So for the four modules, the first module gives an overview and tackles the different concepts on renewable energy and climate change. The second and third module discuss and present the different methodologies and tools developed during the implementation of DevC, which can be adopted or used by the MFIs. While the fourth module is focused on monitoring and evaluation. So we actually aim to conduct two batches of training. The first batch was already conducted in October 2017 and January 2018, which was participated by 11 MFIs. While the second batch will be conducted this coming August 15 to 17 at the Century Park Hotel and August 23 to 24 for the exposure visit to NWTF. So we actually circulated the invite among our members and the deadline for registration is today. So the second batch of training aims to capacitate 10 more MFIs who are interested in developing or starting their own green energy portfolio. For the second phase or the technical assistance with co-financing grant, it aims to provide support to selected MFIs who are interested to develop and start implementing their own green energy portfolio. But remember, the participation in the green microfinance training is a prerequisite for application under the grant facility. The grant facility amounts to 10,000 euros, which can only be used for activities for the project implementation and not as funds for the loan disbursements. It targets to support six MFIs. Three has already been selected among the first batch of training participants, which were CEVI, JMH, and SEDP. CEVI operates in the Visayas, JMH and SEDP operate in the Bicol region. Then another three will be selected among the second batch of training participants and the remaining participants from the first batch of training. For the second component or partnership building, it aims to facilitate green projects for MCPI members through partnerships. It will access funding opportunities to set up a GIF facility to be managed by MCPI. This facility will then be used to finance the components of GIF project of MCPI and support GIF-related portfolio of selected MFIs. This component will also link MFIs to funding opportunities, trainings, and technology providers for their own green portfolio. The last component is the information and knowledge management. This component is ensured in order to capitalize and share experiences to the larger public. In doing so, a web page will be dedicated for Green Inclusive Finance Project where case studies, IEC, 
and different reference materials will be posted specifically on gain inclusive finance initiatives. And as a final slide to my presentation, I will share some key points to remember in starting a green energy financing program. First, one should be a client-centric and not product-centric. In doing so, an energy needs assessment is very important for us to be able to establish the gaps or needs of the clients, hence we can respond to them accordingly. And lastly, business plan and financial viability are key documents for your management to have informed decisions in terms of starting or creating a green energy financing program for your clients. That's all. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you, Anna, very much for those uh, insights. And also, it's really uh, great that MCPA has an enabling framework in which MFIs can easily reach out to you in, if they have any questions or concern regarding how best they can start green lending. Uh, we're almost about time, but I will just take one question. Anna, this question is for you. Uh, you mentioned in your presentation okay. that there is some grant or funding opportunities available. Can you please yes. tell us uh, more about this and how can we be eligible for this uh, funding opportunity or grant? Okay. Hello? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. So the grant facility is actually the second phase of the program of under the Green Inclusive Finance Framework. So basically one of the prerequisites of the grant facility for you, for an MFI to be eligible for that is the participation of the in the green microfinance training. So it's actually one of the prerequisites where an MFI can uh, can apply for the grant facility. So basically, after the training, we will circulate a call for interest among the participants of the training, and then they will send us a letter of intent and a proposal where we will select uh, three proposals or three MFIs to be awarded with the grant facility. So basically, we have a certain indicators where we will look at the, the, the proposals. So those indicators will be the criteria for us to decide which proposal, which MFIs will be awarded with the grant. So all of, all of that or the details of the grant will be tackled during the, the Green Microfinance training. Uh, thank you, Anna. Okay, so we're about time. Uh, so thank you everyone for attending today's webinar on how green lending can benefit you and your members. I would especially like to thank all the speakers, Mr. Pranubda, Ms. Astrela, and Ms. Anna for taking out your time in sharing your experiences, which I hope has inspired many of us attending this webinar. I also hope that this webinar has helped you understand how green lending can be seamlessly integrated into your core business and serve as a third bottom line and not just as a CSR or charity work. Again, uh, remember that we've talked about the market being about more than 11 million in Philippines and Cambodia, more than 1.2 billion in across the world. There are the market is estimated to be about four to six trillion by the end of 2035. And we can also ensure that these 4 million to 6 million deaths, which happen by using this uh, unreliable and toxic uh, energy options can be reduced with our partnerships. So I would like to thank everyone for attending today. And I would just like to end with a note that challenges make work interesting and overcoming those challenges make, make our work more meaningful. Okay, thank you everyone. If you need any support or any further questions, on how best you can start green lending, please feel free to reach out to the Greenlight Planet uh, whose contact details you're seeing on the screen now. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, again, and have a good day and great weekend.